This is Liquid Text, experimental software to help people do focused critical reading. It runs on multi-touch PCs and tablets, so you can control things with simple gestures. To demonstrate, let's say I'm in Journal Editor reviewing an article submission. Now, let's say I see some key claims by the author. I can highlight these by just selecting them and brushing up. This lets me highlight quickly and also offers more flexibility because I can control the intensity of the highlight by how far I brush my finger. I don't think I need this one though, and getting rid of it is just as easy. So now, I'll go through the rest of the document and highlight other important areas as well. Going back through the document again, suppose I come to an important reference and want to keep an eye on it while I read the rest of the article. After selecting the text, I can just create an excerpt from it and pull it off to the workspace on the right where I can resize and reposition it. This gives me a flexible way to control the arrangement of content. I'll create excerpts for other things too, like insightful points, definitions, and anything I want to stay aware of as I read. For each of these, I'll just snap it away from the document and pull it off to the side. After doing this for much of the document, now I've made enough excerpts that they're starting to become disorganized, so I can start attaching them to one another to form groups. I don't think I need this one right now, so I'll shrink it down and move it out of the way. But if I need more space, I can just pan and zoom the workspace as a whole, and organize things however would make the most sense. Now I'm almost at the conclusion of the article, and let's say it seems to contradict the introduction. I'd really like to be able to compare this to the introduction. I could do this by using the preview area to jump back and forth between here and the intro, and that would work, but it's awkward and puts more of a burden on my working memory. So instead, I'll just pinch the document to collapse it up in the middle to bring the two areas together. This way I can see both of them at once. But pinching the entire document together might be a little too tedious for a long article like this. Instead, I'll hold one finger over the conclusion, and the other finger I'll use to touch the introduction on the preview pane. The document will then automatically collapse to show both areas at once. Now, suppose that I find that there actually is a contradiction between these two areas. What I'll do first is select both of the pieces of text that are in contradiction with one another. Now I'll type a comment. Notice how as I do this, a new comment bubble is created off to the side of my document. Also notice how, unlike a traditional comment, this one actually refers to both of the pieces of text that I selected at the same time. The comment starts out attached to my document, but like many people, suppose I want to aggregate my comments together. So I'll detach the comment and move it off to the side. Now I'll uncollapse the document and keep reading. Here maybe the authors make a good point, so I'll add another comment. Now I'll pull it off the document and aggregate it along with the other. Now, let's say I'm ready to start going over my notes and excerpts. First, since I zoomed out of my workspace, my comments and excerpts are rather small. Of course, I can zoom in and pan around, but then I don't see the context. Instead, I'll zoom back out and use three fingers to create a fisheye zoom lens to let me magnify some areas while leaving the larger space visible. Using multi-touch, I can stretch the lens to resize it, and I can even rotate it to change the magnification factor, as with the zoom lens on a camera. Now that I can see this excerpt more easily, I can touch its arrow button to return to its source and make sure I'm interpreting it correctly in context. Actually, these two excerpts seem to relate to each other, so I'll look at both of their contexts by holding down both of their arrows at once, which collapses the document to show both pieces of source text. Now going back to the comments I added, I can just touch the arrow button to see the text that the comment refers to. I'll do the same thing with the comment about the contradiction, and touching its arrow collapses the document albeit slightly too enthusiastically, so I can see both of the pieces of text that were involved. In this way, comments act as more than just annotation objects, 
but as navigational affordances, bridging distant parts of a document. Now, perhaps I'd like to review the text that I highlighted earlier. Rather than manually searching for each highlight, I can enable a special highlight search mode where collapsing the document hides everything except the highlighted text of the color I select. With the collapse gesture in this mode, by controlling the distance I bring my fingers together, I can control the amount of context visible surrounding each highlight, so I have as much context as I need for what I'm doing. When I'm done, I can simply move my fingers apart again to return the document to normal. This has been a demonstration of liquid text. Thank you for watching.